Hello and welcome to Sav Exclusive. I am your host, Natasha Brown. I am so loving who I'm going to be interviewing today. It's absolutely going to be phenomenal, mind blowing, and so entertaining. She is the founder of Port Harcourt in Pictures, Nigeria's foremost blogger here in the city of Port Harcourt. You don't want to go anywhere. You want to be here and watch it all through because it will inform you one way or the other. So stay tuned. All right. Welcome, Miss Tonya Briggs. Hello, hello, hello. Hi, hello. <laughs> nice to be here. Thank you for having me. We have been trying to have you here. I don't know what's been going on. You were supposed to be here the other time and then work, work, work. Work. Well, I'm here. Awards, awards, awards. <laughs> Finally here. Yeah. It's good to be here. Thank you so much. Um, your work is absolutely amazing. Potter cutting pictures. Thank you so much. What's the story behind that? Oh, well, Potter cutting pictures, basically, it wasn't something that was planned. How, how did we start? I was born and bred in Lagos. I schooled in Lagos. And my parents relocated to Potter Cut City and... After school, I was homesick. I wanted to come back to my city. Let me tell you, to choose, I wanted to come back to marry Calabari man. I was like, outside of your environment. So I wanted to look for my own husband in Calabari because I can't speak my language and I wanted to come and learn it. And so I relocated to Portacourt. I was going to relocate to Portacourt City to know my people, know my culture, and then mingle with my people. Because there's this thing about being with your own kind of people mm -hmm. and all. And unfortunately, while I was relocating, I had an accident. And my mom and I slept off in the car, we were driving and before I knew it, I woke up, I went, I was unconscious and then I woke up in the hospital and I'm like, ah, oh, what's happening? I even woke up with a nurse spitting spirit on my face and I'm like, what's happening? And I'm like, where's everybody? Where's my mom? Where's my dad? What happened? Trailer. It was later I heard that we slept off and I'm like, oh, wow. Because that weekend, the weekend I was relocating was, the, was, was my convocation day and my brother's wedding. So it was a lot of pressure on my family and... We slept off and luckily God spared my life and I woke up in the hospital. Now proud to me relocating. My friends had warned me and were like, Toy, what are you going back to doing Port Harcourt City? Look at they even Google Port Harcourt City. Oh, we saw where military, bunkering, oil spillage. And my friends were like, What are you going back to do there? This is Lagos. Lagos is home of opportunities. Why don't you want? I'm like, no, I'm, I really feel like Port Harcourt, I need to know my people and I need to stay with my family. Cause in my mind I'm like, okay, probably in a few years' time you travel for your masters, just spend a few a few years with them and that was what happened i relocated and when the hospital and i was surprised that contrary to what i would heard mm -hmm. we were being served good food in fact the hospitals we were going to were hospital i mean it was my first time entering an mri scan so you know mm -hmm. that nice thing where you're being yeah. you're going into the mm -hmm. they're checking <laughs> you your brain it was, it was and, all that. and i'm like oh i'm like so this is not a village after all. Even the conversations I was having with people, the doctors were, were mind blowing. I was a medical student, so can imagine having a conversation with a with a doctor. I had plastic surgeons come to check my face, check because my brain, like they were checking my brain. Mm. I had neurologists, everybody coming to check me because the accident was crazy. My right hand was in a cast, mm. so with my left hand, I'm like, okay, this place is not that bad. And because I didn't want my friends in Lagos to know what I'd gone through, I had to open a pseudo page. And right there in the hospital, I opened the page, put out in pictures, basically to promote the good people, the good culture, the good places. I started with promoting, posting the food that was being served to the hospitals I was going to, and then to some people that I was busy, I was having conversation with. And that was how the page started on the 19th of March, 2016, at UPTH with my left hand. Interesting, interesting, at UPTH with your left hand. And the funny thing is, you know how, first of all, you were and you had an accident, your family and all of that, and you were already going, you know, um, to your brother, trying to attend your brother's wedding, and it would have been a really sad moment for you. It should have, because it would have been like, they warned me, like literally, I was warned. So, so you would have just sucked into that whole negativity and you, you're like, okay, this is the right call. God has said to me, go back to Lagos and just be a Lagos girl. But then you took the positive side out of it. In fact, after then, I was like, maybe I was going to relocate to Lagos, but somehow God had a way to put me here, put me here because he knew, the, I mean, eight years after, I'm thankful mm. for You're that You're still accident. here. You're still Even doing for that it. Accident, mm. To be honest, I, I started coming back to also marry. I wanted to come and work in oil company because <laughs> yeah, I also right. heard about the oil. So I wanted my parents to just fix me with their friends. I said, okay, get your my share daughter of the oil is now, money. please put her there, put mm -hmm. her in the high position. Let her just get in dollars, paid in dollars. But God had, because if not for the accident, I would have been probably working, doing a nine to five mm. full time. And but where I, would Port Accordant Pictures have been? Like, like I told you, I never even knew that 
some people come out of just posting on Instagram. Mm. I never knew that I could monetize my yeah. Instagram platform. Because all I see people is posting, posting. If I was later on, uh, and I understood what Linda KG was, was doing from mm -hmm. the media, I just thought, okay, she's just posting gossip, finish. I you know, I, it could be monetized. And ch if not for that accident, I won't have, I won't have known this. So thank, mm. thank you for that, for the accident. And it's just to motivate somebody out there in any on likely situation you find try, yourself yes, trying yeah. to try to build good from anything mm. that you might find yourself in don't get sucked into the whole negativity exactly if i i mean my right hand is my is my main hand and mm. if i just did okay they want me i won't have i would have um, but mm. i i took my left hand you know how it's hard for you to be a right handed mm -hmm. person and, and then you're working with I your just left went hand ahead. i mean to be honest it wasn't easy I didn't even know I'll, I'll be here because every day I was always crying. If I show you pictures of my face, my face was battered, oh. my hand in a cast, and all. I would always cry every morning because I couldn't even talk to my friends. But I, I'm, I'm thankful, like I said, I'm thankful for that moment of, and I thank God for creativity that He put in my head there because I could have just opened, like I told some people, I could have been there sending hi, hi, hi to. Just like some of you do, you go on Facebook and say hi to hundred ladies, hundred <laughs> men. Keep I could have done that, but thank God he he gave me that idea to open <laughs> to open a page that promotes right. city. Right, interesting. And and I, I like I like I like what you did there. But now, so Portacot in pictures eight years down the line, mm -hmm. what has kept you going? So I think it's basically the vision because <laughs> the vision of promoting the city and like my name and I think the name too. So I tell people I say. It's put a in picture and sometimes I mean it's frustrating like I like I like I tell some people, what we've been able to do in eight years, if we'd done it in other cities, we would have blown. But mm. I think I, I've been able to stick to the vision of promoting Portacot. So you hardly find anything that is not Portacot. You don't see Lagos, you don't see Abuja, unless it's a Portacot person doing something good in any of the mm, cities. Right, right. And so I stick to pictures, videos of Portacot people, basically promoting the people, culture and places. And of course, good people around me too. The truth is, Portugal people are the most hospitable people, and which is not being which, and, and I think also the the fact that I'm discovering a lot of things that mm -hmm. are not even being amplified. I think that's also what is keeping me. That oh, I'm like oh wow, so there are good things like this in Portugal City, and it's, it's also fulfilling when you promote people and then you get they're telling oh thank you for promoting us, thank you for promoting us, and also I think and what's keep what what's keeping me is the vision. I'm stick the vision is still there to promote Portugal City beyond militancy. Bone queen and oil spillage. So that's what drives me. So you out there, have a vision, make it clear and stick to that vision. It will help you. It would he would help you go a long way in sticking to what you've planned to do for your business or your brand. Mm. Interesting. So what did you actually study in school? What oh, did medical, you major in? Medical physiology. I was a medical student. <laughs> no, you <laughs> it's a far cry from what you're doing. At the University of Lagos College of Medicine. Well, it's a it fun cry, is. totally. But but that's that's the beauty of your story. You you did not start out to say this is what I actually wanted to do. It just happened. <laughs> I, I'm not to sound dark, but accidentally. Totally. So it's almost like when you want to say, you know, how the Bible would say, in all things give thanks. Like you want to almost be thankful that okay that happened. That happened. But we we kind of <laughs> don't want to be thankful, thankful because it could have gone gone south. In fact, uh, you know. On the day we had the accident, I don't know if you guys recall, there was a minister who, he and his family had an accident on that day. It was Mother's oh. Day, and they wiped, they were wiped out. Wow. So, you know, it's somehow, you know, even, you can't even, how do you want to give testimony that God or me, I had an accident. That and then somebody, somebody else so, died. So it's, Come it's, on. It's, it's, it's funny, but like you said, let's just, I don't mm. even know, let's just be thankful to God. And, and, and your early, your early career, like when you started this whole, because I, I remember like when I met you, I can't remember what year that was, we were on a project, Kevin, that, you know, you were just coming from Lagos, you told me all of that, and I, you were also doing a nine to five. Yes, And yes, what doing this, so how were you able to juggle both? So the thing is, what I would do is, I would, during my break time, I used to search for a lot of events, because what, what I did was, after, after I left the hospital, I had to start, I had to keep, keep up with the page mm. because we've been posting every day for the past eight years, every single day. So I would check for events. I was, I was a serial volunteer. So during my lunch break, I'll sneak out from work. And then my boss told me, hey, your lunch is one hour, to, it's getting from one hour to two hours to three yeah. hours. And it continued after work again, I'll change my clothes again. I'll go, I was also serving. I'll change from oh, my, right. I'll change from my NYC office. And then, so, but, I, I just figured, I just realized that I was deriving more joy from promoting these events online than your actual work. Than my actual work, because 
it, yes, it was it was paying me, but I was deriving more joy. And so after like three years, I was able to save up and stick. I had to just focus solely on this. And I was always going to Lagos to also learn more. Because like you said, I transitioned from being a science, medical student mm -hmm. to this, which I, I didn't even go to school for. So I had to start going for social media week in Lagos and learning more about social media and how to use monetize it. Yes. So after like three years, I had to learn how to monetize mm -hmm. properly, social media this time properly. And that was mm -hmm. the breaking point for me. Yeah. And, and you said your first your first gig was actually 1500 1, <laughs> And I didn't even expect it. Because first was like, hello, ma. I still have the DM. Please, we like to make a post, and I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, what does that mean? And she's like, and please, can we pay um, one five? I'm like, for what? And she's like, we want to make it. She next, I'm like, oh, I'm like, are you serious? And I was so happy. I was so happy to call it. I think that one five I used to go and buy. I just flexed myself because it was. I'm, I'm from one five. Mm. I mean, I'm getting like ten times that figure mm. now, eight years after from one five. Mm. So I'm thankful for my humble beginnings. It wasn't easy, and then social media was in, was not even as pronounced as now. Mm -hmm. Nobody even knew. And I'm grateful for that first client who paid for me to post her food business four years ago. Do you still know her now? Does she know you? Funny enough, when I told her about it, she did like what well, she came back like I think three years after, like one year ago. She so she paid me my, my first payment was three years was four years ago. Okay. That's three years into Patagon Pictures. Mm. And then I think three years after last year, she came again. I'm like, Madam, thank you. you know you're the one who and she didn't know she's like, Oh, are you serious? I don't know if she's still in Potter Court, but I don't know if she's really but I know she shuffles Portakot and Abuja, okay. but I'm thankful for that because it also motivated them. I'm like, oh, I'm like, some people are watching. And that time, we're not even so many mm. doing the blogging thing. But from, from there, we've evolved and we've gotten more people. Yeah. I mean, you have you have over 80,000 plus followers well, on your Instagram. On Instagram. Then collectively on all of your socials, that would be more. Over We have over 400k followers. On Twitter, we have 67 on Facebook, or funny enough, Facebook, I don't pay attention to. We have 50k followers wow. already. Interesting. People, I mean, Facebook is so... I mean, how Facebook became... I'm grateful for that. TikTok, we have about 11,000 followers. So collectively, mm. my WhatsApp status is also banger. So we're doing, we do ads on all those platforms, and we also promote Potter Cossity on all those platforms. So mm. from just posting on the hospital, we've been able to gather a lot of followers. And I'm thankful for everybody who's following Potter Cossity pictures. I mean, I don't know why you're following me, but I'm hoping that I'll be able to tell everybody's story sooner or later right. because we need to put our city in good light. Mm. Like I told you earlier, I've never been to India, but here's the dirtiest place in, in, in the world, if you Google it. But guess what? They promote their city mm -hmm. in good light, and which is what is which I also got a cue from. Let's promote Potakot City beyond. We need to amplify the good side of our city. If not, other people will amplify it and tell their tell the, the stories, stories their from own their own way. lenses. Exactly. Right, so right. from their own view. Which might likely be negative. Exactly. So it's better we all collectively come together and tell our own stories the way we're supposed to tell it. If not, our own stories will go extinct and people will amplify their own negative stories about our city, Potakot. Potakot is the best city in Nigeria. Leave it or not. Hello. That's it. That's it right there. <laughs> okay, so um, you're both brand influencer. You're both um, a blogger. I mean, I literally could, could all, almost call yes. you a content creator yes, as well. Okay. I mean, you're three in one. Yeah, yeah. And then literally, so you have also branched into this yes. other aspect of your... We started as an your, Instagram page, hmm. but we transitioned into blogging, influencing our content creation, and we're looking to be in a full-fledged media company. Interesting. Let's hear more about that. Okay, so... Um, if you know the story of Moabudu, she started from interviewing world leaders, mm -hmm. young people, and look at her. She's, she now owns a, a full, full media house. house. Now, right, for me, right. I've been looking for extra streams of income. But I realized that, oh, extra streams of income doesn't necessarily mean go and do food business, clothes business. Mm. But there, you Put can, your hands we, in everywhere. Yes, but right. there, you can do different things in the media sector. So now we've been able to just tell stories of people from what you've heard. Mm. Now we want to sit down with them and hear it from their from the source. Right. Promote Portakot people, indigenous and residents doing great things. Authentically. Authentic. So we are, so those stories that people, those things that you are shy to talk about, we want to amplify it through our platform and also partner with other people. It may not be through our own, it may not be us, but we want to work with other people to amplify these stories. Mm. We thank God for some media people who are doing great things, coming to tell our story, but we also want to stories of the creek, stories of mm. I mean places that people cannot go to. Right, right. And also, lest I forget, Portacot is just one local government out of the 20 local governments mm -hmm. in River State. So we've not even harnessed, we've not even gone to Okrika, we've not gone to Opubo, we've not gone to Abonima. And there are lots of stories, there are lots of things our forefathers have done. Mm. 
Right. So right. we want to become a full fledged media company. Right. I forgot. Uh, we also started doing media coverage for brands. So we also want to be full. Sorry, social media media social media coverage. So yeah. we want to expand that from jo not just people to events and promote. We also started something. We also started promoting the nightlife in Portaco City, which mm. is doing well for us. And if you if you notice. Compared to last year, last year we've had more international brands coming to Portaco City. I mean, a few years ago there was a big brand that I heard that Portaco is one of the big consumers of this brand. But okay. they brought in an artist and they refused to come to Portaco City because they called Ooh. us a red light. So, but I'm happy that this year we've had almost all the international brands coming from Lagos to do events in Portaco City, and that's like a big win for us. So, so it's it's really like good PR happening yes, right now for yes. for Portaco, regardless of whatever is going exactly. on with the government. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. <laughs> right. And I, I actually wish that, you know, the government would actually see this vision. Honestly. And key into it and not kill what we've built so far. To be honest, um, most brands in Port Harcourt, most creatives have built their brands be, be, without government input. Independently. So, independently. So I'm hoping the government stops this brouhaha and, and promotes creatives in River State. There's a whole, there, there are very good creatives who just need one opportunity and someone from the government all this we are fighting over i mean it's not it's not needed does it, it doesn't it's even make needed. sense politics should be out of the way let's support creatives in river state they whole lot we don't need to travel out so before we celebrate our we don't need to die before we celebrate our we mm. need to create an, an enabling environment for creatives to try so right. i'm hoping one or two government officials are watching this we need to unite beyond political parties. We are brothers and sisters. I mean, let the human part of us come alive first mm. before the political part of us. And let's support creatives and those doing good in River State. Interesting, interesting. All right, do stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. And we'll be right back after the short break. Yay. Hello and welcome to another amazing episode of Sub Exclusive. I remain your host, Natasha Brown. And until we change the narrative with what we are introducing, a lot of us are going to continue to stay part of a movement. So, um, talking about drums, we have the conga, we have other drums that are just portable, that can be movable. Her purpose, she needs to find her purpose in life. Because if you don't find your purpose, you will never really be satisfied in marriage. But I started impacting in the lives of my people way before my venture into politics. Expensive drinks, you have to invite the customers the rich people, in fact. <laughs> Not for the poor. Mr. Yiba Coco. Nice. <laughs> This is Tab Exclusive. You know you want to stay tuned to Tab TV if you want more of such amazing discussions coming up right on your screens. All right, welcome back. So before we went on a short break, you know, you made mention of we don't have to die before the government actually does right by us. I mean, sadly, recently we lost one of Port Harcourt's most foremost, you know, creatives, um, the photographer, Wild Shots. And it was disheartening because that was as a result of unrest as well. That was what led to his untimely and death. Is, from what I've heard, the unrest was even over amplified. It wasn't as bad Can as you imagine? most people were right, saying. Right, right, right. Because I even made some calls as well. Yeah, so it happened, but it wasn't as bad. But guess what? Most blogs Just and most people picked it amplified up. Amplified it. They are doing this. They are doing, I remember I was with my assistant and my sister was going and saying, then they do, then they shoot or then they shoot. But it wasn't that bad. The shooting wasn't more than like 10, 20 minutes. It wasn't that bad, but Putting fair, that is why I'm so solidly against spreading bad news because you don't know where it will mm -hmm. go, you don't know what it will cost. You don't know who it's going you to affect in such affect. a negative way. Yeah, so right. I'm not I'm not saying don't spread it, but mm. don't over amplify it. And that was one of the causes. That was one of the causes because there's nobody that will hear that. Oh, this is happening. Mm. My husband they were like, they were like, no, come because it, I mean, and I heard it wasn't so. I mean. It, it was a sad one that happened. Very it was a sad, sad. one. But, but at the end sad. of the day, it makes me understand that, first of all, he was doing a lot of good stuff, like his pictures, his videos as a cinematographer and all of that was amazing. Super but he didn't get that much coverage, coverage while he was alive. And now, even some Lagos blogs and now took it up. His... Took it up. But, like, he's dead. So why now? It is a horrible thing. It's a very painful thing. And... It's a horrible one. That's why, for me, I like to celebrate myself and even people. That's why you see me. I don't know. If you check, anytime I do my birthday, it is loud. Because <laughs> I need to celebrate myself. I don't try. I 
I make it loud. I don't mind emptying my bank account because if you don't celebrate yourself, no, I mean, people are not ready to celebrate you nowadays. People don't care That's much about you, though. For talk TV. I mean, celebrating while I'm alive, at least. Because, that, not only, I mean, look, a lot of us put in a lot. I know, I know what's in my eye I don't see. I mean, I was telling you about how this time last year, I was in a mess. Mm -hmm. I was in a mess. I was all over blogs, blogs. and my tabloids. friends were even talking about things mm. i don't done what i've done what i've not done and i couldn't even defend myself but look at me one year after that's why i make it that my birthday is a blast because now i mean i mean i need to celebrate myself and i make people know now more i put i, I got to up putting myself on billboards yes now i need to run now <laughs> i put myself on billboards i put myself on i love blogs. your because energy <laughs> you need to I know what i'm it. doing i'm kind I love of waiting it. for government to celebrate right. me. i'm waiting for okay they never give me money with that no 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 shout no, no, your no. shout put myself literally out there no so Put yourself in this out day. There. We're doing good job, but don't let, don't wait for people to celebrate. Right. Celebrate yourself. Interesting. Not only you know what thing you did do, how you're doing it. And so it it brings me to the question. Before we get into the the drama that happened, you know, with your former employees, I want to ask you: How are you able to to separate Toye Briggs? as a personal brand from Potter Cutting Pictures? Because I know they'll be a class from time let to me time. Not, let me not lie to you. It's not been easy because at first, I was faceless. Nobody knew me as the face of the brand. But of course, Uncle Mark came with views and all. So you had to dance and show your face on Instagram mm. before your post will be put up on Explore page. And I started gradually introducing myself as the face of the brand because people even thought I was the guy. But now because of that, most people now associate me. If I didn't want, they, they want if it's not toying, they don't want they don't they don't see toying as my product. I mean, I'm looking at building a brand that will outlive me. Because mm -hmm. that is what matters. I mean, I don't want my brand to go down with me. Plus, I want to, like I told you, I want to also move into other media sectors mm -hmm. and all. So it's not been easy, but what I'm doing is I'm trying to also build a team that can understand what I'm doing. It's not, it's not been easy finding people as passionate as I am because most Gen Z's now, Gen Z's are big now. Gen Z's just <laughs> want to, they see me as, oh, hi, I want to work with you. They don't know that, um, uh, to... To build a brand is not... Yes, right. they are paying me big, but do you know how many times I run from event to event? Do you know how many people yeah. like, times I sit down to promote the city? It's not been easy, but I'm thank, I thank God for... Um, he's been able to bring in good good colleagues now who are ready to support the brand and also... Mm. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to put myself into them, replicate myself into them, because if I don't delegate at the end of the day, either this brand dies with me or, or you suffer burnout. I get exactly, I get exhausted. And which is not what, I mean, exhaustion is also one of the things that kills creatives. So mm -hmm. you're exhausted and you're not able to even deliver. And that exhaustion is what, if you notice, just like let me use tailors. I think that the best tailors disappoint people. Disappoint mm -hmm. people. Because they're so good and they collect so many. So <laughs> right, I don't want, right, I don't want right. to be that way because I want the brand, I want to keep up to the vision mm. of the brand. I don't want to be able, I don't want to... Um, not meet up to standards of clients so i'm trying i'm 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 already in the process of delegating and replicating okay. myself in my staff okay and letting them know that or more nothing comes easy but i was not built in it and that's why I'm, I'm i'm always happy to share my story because i didn't just start in one day you can imagine um there are, there are 366 days in a year i've been posting for 360 days times seven and will be eight in that's times a eight lot. years. So that's how many lot. of you can actually? We, and we don't just post once a day. We post about fifteen times a day. Right. So right, I'm trying to right, also make right. them. That's a lot of work. It's, it's, it's hard work. That's it's hard, a nothing lot of comes work. easy. You have to put in that work. I I, I want to ask. So definitely, your parents had seen you medical inclined. So they almost probably had a picture in their heads for what your transition was going to be like in terms of career. Did you have that's any right. backlash? Oh, or well, any, well, what, what is wrong with our daughter? What actually is she doing? Did he have any well, of that? Or support all the phone. way? Okay. So they always see me in my phone. What are you doing with your phone? Come out and cook. How are you your phone? Come out and do this. And I'm like, I'm working. So it was hard to explain to them that. What I'm doing is actual work. Working. And that's why I thank God for COVID year. For me, COVID year was my best day. And oh, okay. it made my parents understand the power of the phone and social media. So right now, you even see my dad and my mom on social media laughing. He, 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 he. So one day, my mom was like, my mom was like, Toye, this is addictive, oh. I'll be praying and I'll just see WhatsApp message or Facebook and I'll be like, I said, mommy, are you seeing what me I mean, I'm working. So yeah. I'm happy because it made us understand that people now understood the power of what social media can do and how you can. I mean, right now, you can even go on global meetings with your mobile phone. You can reach out to 
world leader with your mobile phone. So it was not easy because they didn't understand how a young girl like me would be on her phone. Two four seven. Two four seven. And I thank God for all those who also believed in me and then exchanged my services for some monetary value from from for, for, for some money because they now saw that I could take care of some needs in the house mm -hmm. and it also helped me. So some of us some of us creatives don't eat all your money. If you have if you save if you have a lot if you, if for instance. I when I moved to Portugal, I, I, I used to have a 9 p.m. curfew. I can't go home after 9 p.m. I must be home before 9 p.m. Mm. rather. But when I saw that, okay, this girl was getting some awards, she was getting some, she was helping with some things in there. They not understood. They saw that okay, she, she wasn't just staying out late and doing this. She was also so it was good when you see my friends, my the friends of my parents saying, Oh, we saw your daughter here, yeah, she's covering mm. this, she's covering so. As also you're being a creative, also make sure that you're also creating value to the people right, that matter. Right, right. So after right. they now that okay, this girl, yeah, she's staying out later, but she's bringing in money assisting me. They had to just leave me. And then when also I was recognized and given a free all let's say pay to Jennifer Switzerland, they now that okay, this girl knows she's what actually she's doing. Now yeah. let's talk about that big one. Mm -hmm. That big one, World Economic Forum. You were you were picked to represent Port Harcourt in Switzerland. That, that, that must have been amazing. No, it, it, was, it was I didn't believe it. And then I, it was not you said that it was not you didn't actually just promote yourself for that. Somebody actually reposted your, your work. Yes, yes. Yeah, so um I went for social media week and then I met with Linda KG and I just took a picture, random picture and talked about her. I attended that event and all. I didn't know that somebody in Port Harcourt is just like what you're doing. I'd already picked up my story and promoted me online. Mm -hmm. And so when I even went for my interview at the embassy, at the, at the Schengen embassy, it was that picture that I downloaded that helped them boost mm -hmm. my credibility. credibility. So it's also good for you to build your digital footprint. I explained, I explained earlier about how I celebrate myself on my birthday. Build your <laughs> digital footprint. Create a story about yourself. If they don't come and celebrate you, go and meet them. You can, right now, I don't want to say the body, what has gone You can actually go to online newspapers and tell them your story. Mm. Because right now, your digital footprint is your CV now. Right, People want right, to know what right. you're up to online. If they, want, if they Google, when I go and talk in some places, I tell them, Google your name. If they Google, if you Google Tony and Bricks, you see what will come out. It's my brand new No right. campaign. <laughs> if you Google your name, what, what comes out? Right. That's why your digital footprint is very essential. So aside, like I said earlier, aside going on Facebook to say hi, 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 hi to 100 people and expecting... In the DMs. And sending, expecting, when you say hi to 100 people, you said 30 girls to send you hi and then you engage in frivolous conversations. Try and build your digital footprint. Do something. That work you're doing, that car you're selling, that cake you're making, that bid, promote it online. Don't wait for Tony and Portagon just to promote you because like I, I can say somebody... In eight years, I cannot promote over one billion people yeah. in Nigeria. Mm. It's not possible because you, before you wait for me to reach your to reach your turn, I don't know what will happen. But you can promote yourself mm. and put yourself up, put yourself top of mind. And this, that's what I encourage other people to create is push yourself. Don't just be mm. like yeah. a about things. Push yourself online and build your digital free. That's what helped me get this thing because they look online. I mean, not all of us are even. Aside being being nominated, it's not all of us that they, 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 they took because they were afraid that some of us would go there and run away. But my digital footprint was what saved me. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. And so, <clears throat> you know how most of the time we think that a lot of us, a number of us think social media is just for, you know, you just want to show yourself, you know, be amazing and all of that. But Gen there is... Everybody. <laughs> show us like <laughs> <laughs> but there's actually the business angle to it, especially when you are, whatever your vision is, if you actually want to be a body whereby the kind of brands you want to promote is lingerie and all of that, mm -hmm. those people will come, to, come you. to you. But whatever you are trying to promote, you need to have your corporate footprint at the back of your head. Absolutely. What right. businesses would I like to work with? That, that would curate the kind of things you put on your, you know, on your media and all of that. So, so that's interesting to note. And still on your wins, you had about three awards there about this year alone, oh. back to back. Mm -hmm. Hello. That was, that was, I mean, it was, I mean, it wasn't my first time winning awards, but it came back to back. And this is after like seven years. I mean, we'll be eight in a couple of months. And it was something I didn't, I didn't expect, but I don't want to bring in God, but it just shows that people are watching. You can imagine after seven years, when people are really seeing your hard work and you're being celebrated globally. Seven years of hard work. So some of us here have done one year, two years, and we're like, why is nobody we're celebrating? We're tired me? already. <laughs> be consistent. Con I mean, hard work doesn't pay. Yeah, hard work pays, <laughs> but it doesn't pay as much as consistency. Mm -hmm. 
if hard work pays, the bricklayer there will be one of the most celebrated person. But consistency, that thing you believe in, please don't give up. Continue that thing. Don't cut corners. That's one of the things I saw. I didn't know people were watching what I was doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it's not easy for seven years not to... And another thing was that I also had to make sure I don't put too much emotion. So I had to mm, also try to... Right. Toya Bricks is very emotional. I mean, you mommy, but I had to make sure... But I got the pictures doesn't... I mean, so even if I see my enemy, I still promote the good side of, the, of, of, of my yeah. enemy because... The vision was to promote Portaco City and people were watching. So consistency is very key. It will fetch you. I mean, seven years after, I was telling somebody, we're just roughly 80 point something followers on Instagram. I've had people who, are, who started blogging after me who have reached 100k followers. Did that get to me? Yes. But did that like, affect me? No. Mm. It got to me and I'm like, I'm like, okay, God, I've been doing this thing for seven years. Why, Why am I not there yet? Yeah. What, what are they doing? I, fine. Because, like I explained to you earlier, I was never showing my face. I'm like, oh, my friends are dancing on Instagram. Why can't I dance too? I'll be, I'll be, I'll be trying to compare myself. But guess what? Guess who is winning the awards now? It's not, it's, it's not by my hard work. It's by from constant. Mm. So please, that thing that you are doing, that you believe in, if you know that God gave you that vision, be consistent. Okay, so if, if, I, I, I want to ask you this question: Why are you still here, right? So reason being that I've interviewed a number of creatives and a number of those. <clears throat> that I've spoken with, even in this year, yeah. they've either jackpot or they've traveled to another state. They've moved totally to another state. I mean, one content creator I also interviewed sometime this year, she has totally moved to Lagos and all of that. But why are you still here? What keeps you? Okay, so the thing is, <laughs> there's a particular quote that, like, everybody looks, but not everybody sees. Portaco City has a lot of potential that we do not, we've not fully harnessed. What I want is for people to, I mean, that extra, I see some of my friends relocated to Lagos and I see how in Portacot, we tell them, oh yeah, let's go and do three, four events and go. They say, no, no, but they get to Lagos. I see them 4 a.m. They've already woken up. You need to also put in work. After people, if you sit down in Portacot and wait for it to come to you, it will not come to you because politics is number one. They will use politics to push you out. Yeah. So you need to find your way in there. So... For me, most people, I feel like, okay, they're leaving Portaco because it's already their comfort zone, which I'm not going to totally ignore that. Okay, leaving your comfort zone would also boost you because I let, also like my comfort zone in Lagos. But we've not fully unnerved the potentials in Portaco City. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that when you're traveling out of the country, you see more, when you're traveling, you see more Niger more black people living. But when you're coming back, you see more white people coming yeah. in. What are those right. white people seeing, seeing that we're seeing not that seeing? We're not seeing? Right, interesting. Interesting. And then, I, I love how you say that because, I mean, also in as much as I've talked to you, I've spoken with some other people as well, some other creatives that are based here, and they're saying it as well. In spite of what the government is doing or whatnot, they're still thriving, they're still pushing themselves independently, and that's interesting to note. So it brings me back to what happened to your nine to five. <laughs> it was a whole ruckus. Oh, the well, blogs <laughs> took it up. It was almost like a character assassination, so to speak. <laughs> It's something I don't like happened? to talk about, but my former company was one of the best. I mean, I don't regret working in that company because that was when I actually saw that there was money. I mean, there was money. Like, people had money in this river state. Right. And I mean, I was any salaries that CEOs... In fact, my salary was... My mom is a medical doctor, and in a... My mom should be over, like, probably 30 to 40 years in a medical profession. The money that she's earning now after like 30 years yeah. is what I was earning in just f five years in Portaco City. Wow. So you can imagine my mom and I go, she has spent, you know, medical lawyers, you can't mm -hmm. move higher than your, mm -hmm. and that's the good about creative, creative, cre creative industry. You can enter in one year and be earning 10 times who was then on like, as a lawyer or doctor, you cannot, you cannot just become a doctor yeah. and earn more than your, predis, your, your predecessors, your, 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 your bosses. Mm. And so I was earning like the same time with my mom and, with my mom and my parents are like, oh, see this small girl. And it was fun for me because I was, um, it was an amazing industry. But I really don't know what happened. I cannot explain. All of a sudden, I was told, oh, this, this, this is a company that I gave my heart to. I mean, you worked there for about three years? No, about? no, no, no. It was two years. Okay, two years. About, about two years. Okay. And I was like, till today, I don't even know what happened. But all I knew that I was hearing different stories about what happened. And I'm like, okay. 
what exactly happened? You can't necessarily somebody to wake up one day and because I'd give him in fact, protocol officer was still running, but I'd put it in charge. I'd put some of my that was when I even started having assistants. Okay. Three years ago. I put um, in charge of my assistants because it was a faceless brand. And I just told, I was just one day, don't come to work anymore. And I'm like, with no salary, with no uh, prior notice. Not, with no notice. Just... I didn't I didn't be given any query. And it was confusing. And I'm like, where will I start? Because I'd carried that company on my head. In fact, people is, so when, when, he have, when they posted me online, we were like, Tonya, hope your mama gets this company. <laughs> you just know say, I didn't see your mama, your family, because I took it as my you own You took company. it personal. And right. it, it, it hurt me. I was broken hearted because I couldn't, it, it now brought me back to my accident days where people had warned me about this company. But I was like, no, I love the environment. And it was like, who would I tell again? What would I do that I'm no longer in this company? But they went ahead and posted me online and put, don't hire, she's a fraudulent person. I'm like, wow. And I'm like, wow. And I'm like, well, I thank God that a year after, I thank God for that opportunity because if that opportunity did not, if, if I wasn't sacked from that company, it wouldn't have built up the content creation side of me. Right now, I'm happy that people now align with the Toy and Bricks brand. I've been able mm. to also remove Toy and Bricks from Protagon Design. People are now even paying Toy and Bricks more. Mm. Right, right. They've now seen Toy and Bricks. I've been able to push myself. I didn't, I, of course, yes, I stayed after for like a month, few months. I was down, I was broken, I know, but I picked myself up and pushed myself. And right now, this is the voice you're hearing. I, I mean, look at you already, even having awards, awards and all of that. Amazing. That's that's a mark on your credibility as well, regardless of whatever happened and whatever was put out there. Amazing. Because if whatever was said was true, brands would not want to work with you. It affected me for a few months, but I had to put myself pick myself up and put myself out because like I said, tell, I couldn't prove to anybody or I'd rather I couldn't be there to defend myself where these things were mm. but what I was able to do was prove to myself and to people that that was not what what was said was not what was true. And I thank God that look at me now, three awards and counting like, I mean yeah. the year has not even ended. I don't know if I'll get more awards <laughs> and Shout out to brands who have seen me worthy or who have found me worthy to receive this award because it's not easy. People have voted for me to win this award. Some, some, some of these awards have been given to me by merit, some by voting. And I thank everybody who has seen me, despite my flaws, who still follows me, who still likes my, likes my posts and engages me with the content. I mean, it's a boost for me. Mm. And these awards are also a boost to let me know that more people are enjoying People are watching content. what people you're doing. Watching. And they're enjoying it. I love that. I love that. And I'm sure that, you know, there's much more that is going to happen for you. Absolutely. But now let's let's talk about um, the col collaboration going on in the creative sector here in River State and even in Nigeria. How are we harnessing the power of collaboration? And not just only amongst ourselves as locals, but interpolating, like working with some other state um, content creators outside of Nigeria and all of that. How are we harnessing that down here? So we so far so good. We've tried, but we've not fully optimized this. Mm. But I'm happy for the level of collaboration, especially in River State. Now we've seen that almost competition is not going to get us anywhere because you only divide, you only create a divide. So right now, most of us are coming together and thank God for most TikTok challenges is also bringing mm. influencers. I mean, influencers together. I remember when um, Adekule Go did this Ogaraya, we, we saw a lot of business owners, creators coming together to create those challenges. And I'm happy that right now we've, we've come to fully understand that collaboration is key because if we don't come, I mean, individually we are good, but together we're a force. We're, I mean, an undeniable it's, it's, force. It's easy. Right. And if you notice it, even when these Lagos brands come into Potaco cities, when they see that everybody's speaking the same language, it's it's very easy. It's very it's 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 hard for them to create a divide because mm. we've been able to come together, create a community, and say, okay, no, all of us have to come together if we're going to push this city. So I'm happy. The level we've not reached there, but so far so good. We've done a lot with collaboration, and I'm hoping that in the next one year there'll be more collaboration among creatives, among right now you even see. You see people, you see the photographer come and meet an influencer, meets probably a makeup artist. We're coming together to do mm. things and create. I mean, Potakot had its first wedding collaboration. It was mm. big. It looked like a real wedding. We had influencers, creatives, cake people. Yeah. Everybody comes mm. together to create. And I, I'm hoping that we can do more of this. So, so showcase what can be done in River mm. State. And even in events. I'm seeing more collaboration with events, event planners in Potakot City. So, I big ups to creatives. We, I know that. In the next one year, we're going higher and higher. 
Interesting. Okay, so rounding this off, I'll just ask you two questions. One, for a young creative coming up, um, they're down, they're tired. They're like, oh, why, am I, why are my followers not growing? Why are they paying me? Why are they pricing me so much less than what I'm worth? And literally, they almost want to quit. Like, what would you advise them to do? So first of all, you need to know your why. Why did you start the page? You need to know your why and stick to your why. Secondly, be consistent. Also, Rome was not built in a day. Like I told you, look at me. It's, it's after seven years I'm receiving awards. I felt that way. But because I stuck to my vision. So, Rome was not built in a day. Stick to your why. If you have to write down your why, why are you doing this thing? Stick to it. Be consistent. Then also, have a community. There's, there's something that people around you do that you mm. don't even know. I mean, there's a shoulder to cry on. You know, that, you, know, you know that what you are going through, every other person is going through it. That was also what I learned when I traveled to Lagos. I realized that all of us are also going through the same thing. Creators are also going through the same thing. So it's not just you going through that thing. But if you have that vision, stick to that vision. And also stick to the vision. Be consistent. Right, right down to be consistent. And also collaborate. Create, have a community of people. I think that's, that's what also helped me. So even if I put down a post today, I know that... At least I have five followers who will like my post. I've been able mm. to create a community. So create a community, have a vision, and also be consistent. Trust me, heaven will smile on you sooner or later. Lovely. It lovely. might not be eight years like mine, maybe two <laughs> it, years, it might, might be, be ten yeah. years, but keep going. Interesting. Okay, lastly, Tonya Briggs as a brand. Where do we see you in the next three years? Okay, so what should we look forward to? Uh, okay, so <laughs> in the next three years. But I'm going to be will be eight next one. In the next three years, we should be 10, 11 years. I'm hoping to set up a full-fledged media brand in the South South. Nice. I mean, we've had it in Nigeria. We've not had it in the South South. That tells the story of the Niger Delta region and the South. Yes, of course, we've had good people who have started telling stories, but I want to also collaborate with those who are doing this and do this on a big scale. Okay. Because right now, I don't know if you've noticed that. Um, but I've got this opinion about seeing brands coming mm -hmm, in. Mm -hmm. I don't want people to come in and tell our stories or take over because they're eyeing Port Harcourt. But I want to set up a full-fledged media brand. So you're coming here. Mainly you're coming here. You can Google anybody in Port Harcourt and it's showing up on Google. Lovely. Any Lovely. business is showing up on, on Google and everybody, brands are, are showing up. So a full-fledged media company and that can represent, I mean, Port Harcourt. Right now, if you Google, if you ask people, what is Nigeria? They tell you Lagos. No. Nigeria is not Lagos. Port Harcourt is in Nigeria. So we want Port Harcourt to be the I want to build a brand that will Spotlight. make Potako, yes, put it on the map and create That's the capital it. of Nigeria. I love that. I love that. That is such a lofty vision. And I know that it's attainable. I mean, yeah, what can you it. not do? For I mean, instance, in the music industry, you see that Potako people are taking over from Bonham Boy to you. Malay, So We're I mean, doing it big, eh? <laughs> I mean, I, I don't even want to. I don't even want to bring up the part where you were actually deputy governor of a party ah, at some yes. point. In time. So, <laughs> I thought you were going to mention that. Oh yes, the news flash in 2016, <laughs> seven, Oh well, no, 2019 elections. I was the gubernatorial candidate, deputy gubernatorial candidate of a party leadership river, leadership party of Nigeria. So you can Google it. Very <laughs> fast. Was... Very fast. Every day. So it was, oh it, was, it, was, it was. It was. It was. It was. When they came to meet me, I'm like, no, 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 I can't do it. And thankful for friends. I'm like, you can do it. Go ahead. You can do that. You can do that. And I thank God for that opportunity. That's to tell you, please, any opportunity you find yourself, never say never. If I didn't go for that opportunity, that was what also helped me when I was applying for a Schengen visa to represent Nigeria. In, Switzerland. It was my digital footprint of me being. They were able to see that. The, okay. Candidate and made them understand that I was going to come back. So take up positions as a creative. Don't say no, no, no. Don't go into then, hiding. Yes. I believe. I, I believe. I'm. I'm big on human capacity development. I believe that young people are central to solution making and policy making and implementation. So and implementation. So you're not too young to run. You're not too wrong. You're not too young to do that. I mean. I'm a Gen Z body, uh -huh. but I own an 80 year old company now. That's a proud moment for me. I was a deputy, deputy. So start that thing and take that position. You don't know where to help you in future. You don't know who will be motivated by that. And I'm thankful for that opportunity because you also opened my eyes to politics. And of course, it, it, it discouraged me a bit, but I now saw that, okay, the next time I'm going to go back for it to contest, and then I'll be fully prepared and I would have my. 
that's how that's how I'm also building my digital footprint in governance and policy making so that by the time I'm also going back, I'm fully prepared for this journey. Oh, interesting. We have evidence. Yes. Like, okay, <laughs> this is her track record so far. I love that. Thank you so much, Tony Briggs. Wishing Thanks you all the me. best. This yes. has been so lovely. I hope you've learned one or two things. I mean, she's a force to reckon with. I can't I can't even imagine what else um, we have coming up. But thank you so much for watching. And definitely she is one that you want to, you know meet up which is one that you want to actually what's the word now um key into yes, to collaborate Open with to collaboration, <laughs> and all of that so thank you so much this is tab tb everyone your host natasha brown bye for now